There you go. Let's so say hi to Jeff in Pennsylvania. Pharrell fucko list. Jeff. Uh, I was listening to it on Friday. We got XM and Sirius, and uh, they were just fucking going crazy on him. And he, like you said, he was dumping, and that, that fool couldn't talk, and she couldn't say anything. And somebody called up one time and was playing Emily's My Vagina, and he was completely thrown on the fucking floor. The guy's a goofball, and you're right. He, he can't keep a common thought, and it's just fucking horrible. No, dude, he was going off on so many. I, and, and to tell you the truth, out of all the time that we have known the guy, I only heard him on our show. I couldn't listen to his show. I don't like his show. But I understood that some people uh, did like him. Fine. Uh, I couldn't stomach him that much. When he would go off and just start rambling, you try to ask him a question or steer him in a direction about a sports story that was going on, and he's off. And, like, you, you want to have a discussion with the guy, and it's impossible. So they put this hole with him, and she tries to steer him. It doesn't work. It is nothing but this disjointed babble that you can't get a hold of for long enough to, to enjoy anything. Is she good, though? Does she have some funny things? I couldn't tell. I couldn't even tell if she was just your standard hole or she could be the best fucking thing in radio. With him just... Shut up. <laughs> Ramon calls coming in. Oh, yeah. You Ramon. Suck. Ramon. <laughs> Not you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Take this man with throat cancer <laughs> off the air. I mean, just h horrendous. Boston Strangler, what's up? Hey, good morning, boys. Good morning. I just Everybody know that the attack is still on for tonight. Oh, it ain't stopping. Oh, no, definitely not. We're going to be back in the, the uh, Pal Talk war room at 8 p.m. when the show goes on, and we're going to fucking destroy him. I don't, you know, he didn't have to go over there and trash us. Nope. We didn't do anything If to he him. went over he posted there. posted something on his website, so we, we called him out on it, like, what's that about? And we even said, call our show so we can work this out. Because then he wrote a few people say, look, I didn't write it. So I'm like, all right, call the show. Let's talk it out. You know? But I think the pest at this point, they, they could smell a phony. He, di he didn't have to do that. Now he's going to nope. have to pay for it. And now where are the assholes? Look, you're all over there because we can uh, work out a deal. That's fine. That's fine. It's fine. We're, we would be bummed. But, but to go over there and the first chance you get is trash us? What's that about? Well, dude, in one breath he was praising you guys, and then the next breath he was going, you know, fuck Opie and Anthony. He was making references to your uh, agents. And he's a how lunatic. I know. He's a Friggin fucking lunatic. And then uh, at another point, he kept on going on and saying basically how uh, you guys abandoned him, and uh, here you guys are on a beach drinking, making money while he's starving to death. Yeah, while everyone else uh, got fired over there. Yeah, because that was our motive. Yeah, we weren't trying to get another fucking job somewhere the next day that Infinity locked us into our contract and fired everybody else. That's our fault. Because we went up to Mel Carmazin's office and said, Mel, could you keep paying us so we can't fucking work, but fire all the people that have been loyal and uh, we appreciated having working for us uh, for three or, or five years or whatever the fuck years it was? That's what happened. Yeah, we told Mel Carmazin what the fuck to do. What a deranged fucking drunk idiot that cocksucker is. Fuck Pharrell. Fuck Pharrell. Well, anyway, I just want to put out an APB, an all pest bulletin, to come into the Pal Talk rooms tonight around 8 o'clock. The number for Stern Show or Pharrell Show is 1-888-STERN-100. We're going to freaking destroy him like we did last time. We got a like. If he's brave enough to <laughs> have, fun, have fun taking calls, Pharrell. Hey, how have do uh, people get it? Uh... Get on this Pal Talk, by the way, because there's a lot of people emailing saying, look, I want to be part of the Pal Talk. Uh, oh, yeah. Well, in order to keep the enemy element out, it's kind of a thing you got to go through. Oh, I see. Okay. But uh, but if, it, go on a Pal Talk, get in a room, see what you can work out. <laughs> all right. That's all they can really say. All right, it's you guys. Very, and, it's, gotta... and it's very entertaining to listen to. Do we to. have any uh, audio of that or not? Do we have any Yeah, problem? we got Scott Farrell on Howard. This, this guy... Was our friend. I mean, it, I mean yeah. it's so ridiculous to say anyone's your friend in radio. It really is. But I did a show when we were off Tim the Tim Sabian and I, I were a... talking back and forth on a weekly basis from the day I got fired all the way up until he took a job at the Little Doggy Company. And out of nowhere, he just fucking goes to work with Howard. He hates Howard. Yeah, but Tim he is... said how great we were. He had fucking posters in his office down at YSP even after we got fired. The yeah. guy fucking loves us. 
and turns around and goes to work with Howard. But I have no problem with Tim no, Sabian either. Not at all. I, I really have a, can't. I have a big fucking problem. Dude, with Tim. He, he might I, like and Mel. Was, Maybe he likes working with Mel. And I was closest to Tim than all you guys. He's a fucking phony just like the rest of them. Maybe XM did both of them money. It's, it's sad to say that, but I'm calling him out. He's a fucking phony like the rest of them. Because there was a reason why he wasn't ready to mm. leave his uh, past job and come over to XM. There was a stock thing and there were other uh, concerns. I that he wanted to wait out. Him. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, he like he pulls the trigger and goes to work for uh, Howard. I don't know what deals are made phony. by these guys, so I can't yeah. just so just for the fact of going over there, I don't have enough information. I don't know what X, well, if XM said, "Hey Tim, uh, here's a hundred thousand dollars a year. Uh, we want you to sign a fucking ten year contract. Come on over." And Sirius goes, "Hey Tim, here's a million uh, five a year. Uh, here's uh, umpteen thousand fucking shares of stock." Here's uh, uh, the power position you're going to have, and you're back under Mel, who loves you. Uh, you know, you can't fault the guy. The, the weight of ONA loyalty to that has to balance out somewhere. No. Yeah, I got no problem it with Tim. Just, he didn't badmouth him. So, so personally for me... You guys don't know the inside scoop. And he's it not wasn't about the money. It wasn't about the money. I'm telling you. Oh, maybe he just it loves Mel. It wasn't about the fucking money. Maybe he loves Mel. I, mean, I don't know, but it's, it's not a love for Howard or a dislike for Howard. Right. It's, it's these sure. guys on radio. They're a bunch of fucking phonies. They love you, but then they turn around and, and you know, kick you in the balls when you're not looking. Well, I'm if... telling you, man. And then, I, you know, I was really close with the guy, and I find out from a stupid radio message board that he got hired over there. Didn't even have the balls to call up and go, oh, look, like... dude, this is what's going on. He probably would have been in big trouble if he called the Opie and Anthony show. On XM to announce that he was on not the our actual show behind the or, scenes. I slept in the fucking guy's house. I'm telling you. Go through his drawers. <sighs> Big condoms, XLs. No, that was he got in there? That was uh, somebody else. Uh, swamp knob. Anthony. Good name. <laughs> Anthony, you there? Yes, my friend. I am here until 11:01. Anthony, listen, the other night, I don't know if you got on in time, one of the callers called up his uh, Howard's daughter, Emily, and got in singing the whole My Vagina song, and the stupid douchebag Pharrell didn't even catch on to it and let it go for a minute and say, nah, that's great, I don't know what this guy's talking about, he just sat there laughing his butt. I don't know what it is, I don't know what it is, it up, Stop. It was great. I was in tears. The whole the whole board in the uh, talk was in tears over it. Well, if you guys got audio of that, please send it in. We love that <laughs> shit. Hey, how about, hey, Ann, did you catch Lil on Cam the other night? She was out of her mind. She's a classic Lil on uh, Cam. No. Oh, she was crazy naughty girl the other night. Yeah, she's a dirty oh, girl. Oh, she's a filthy, uh, right. lovely individual. All right, thanks. Let's go to Rose in West Virginia. Rose? Hey, it's hey. me. Hey! <laughs> I did the My Vagina call. I'm calling in to take credit for it. Did you? Oh, that yeah. was you? Yep. Very was good. Me. Very good. One of our pests helping us out. What'd you say when you called? That you were Emily? Uh, no, I just called up, told them I was from West Virginia, told them I loved Pharrell, and they were like, oh, we'll put you right through. And uh, as soon as he picked up, I started in with the My Vagina. <laughs> Very good. Yep. Thanks for that, Rose. Thanks. Bye, Rose. All right, let's uh, say hi to Joe and Jersey. Never Joe. let go, Rose. Joe. Hey, Awful name. Hey, Anthony, why don't you tell us how you really feel about Pharrell? Don't hold back. <laughs> yeah. Listen. This guy is such a fucking asshole. When he was on your show, you guys talk sports. You know, when you trade a guy in sports, they stay friends with each other just because they go from Dallas to Pittsburgh or whatever. They, they stay pals. It's Why bizarre. does this guy got to out himself and be a fucking dick? It's he bizarre. I think there. I think he feels like he has to like kiss Howard's ass to work right. over there. Like so Anthony he brought up. Because it's really bizarre that he would just go after us like that. We're at the point yeah. now where if somebody bashes us, they feel like they're getting in a little better with Howard. And uh, that isn't the case. You're being bamboozled. Well, and these guys up, uh, have no idea they're making a huge mistake because they're not working for the Howard Stern of 1995-ish. No. Howard's it's a whole new world, man. He's not a boss. He's overpaid. When we, when we were off the air, I did his show. I think it was Atlanta. And uh, he was great. I mean, he was asking for you guys. He was he was happy. Yeah, we, we got talking. audio of him kissing our ass. It was, uh, you don't have to go any further than this machine right here to find audio of him kissing our well, ass. Well, I would like to hear it if fucking Hawk was on duty instead of leading his fucking awful sandwich there and traipsing off to engage in homosexual what behavior. What is he eating? What is in that? It's just awful. What is it? Oh, shit. Oh, it's in the car. Put it back up there. Put it back up there now. 
Hey, Jimmy, I spoke to your mom at your HBO show. Oh. <laughs> Eric, your thing fell over. <laughs> your thing fell What was that? Hey, it's on my seat now. Your sandwich fell, Eric. What was in that, Eric? Tuna. Tuna? It's all over the floor. Hey, Jim. Why. Yeah, you I did. You fucking stomped it like a Gestapo. <laughs> what? I saw you doing the HBO show, and after the show, I talked to your mom and dad. Okay. And I told her that it was funny the way, you know, you guys played that message from your machine. And she was like, oh, my God, I was mortified. I had no idea when I left that message she was going to bring it in. She was so cute. I just wanted to say she was all right. Oh, oh thank you. Cute. All right. Um, <laughs> thanks. I got to apologize. I'm sorry, Eric. It seemed right at the time, and now Jeez, it, and it seems right now. Sandwich. I don't and, apologize. And You're I, the boss. And now I feel bad. This N tuna in the treads of my... <laughs> Not only should you have done that, you should have done it while it was in his hand and he was eating it. While it was in his mouth. <laughs> That's how you assert power.